Hello everyone, and uh, welcome back. This is a live stream that we haven't done in a very, very long time. I actually think my last command live stream was something a little over two years ago when I was actually demonstrating the professional edition of Command, which was absolutely wild. And believe it or not, I still do have the professional version of Command, and uh, that's not actually what we're going to be showing off today. You might actually find it interesting to know that I don't usually play the professional edition. I actually prefer the civilian version for a lot of different reasons, but um, kind of, again, things you can ask to get a little later on. So the purpose of this live stream today is to basically provide folks who are new to the game to understand what it is you're getting when you buy command. And my hope also is that we get a little bit of interaction from kind of the audience who are going to sneak in there and maybe toss in a couple of kind of unasked questions or unanswered questions that we can kind of go through. Maybe there's something you'd like to see. And again, I'll kind of keep an eye on that as I'm sort of doing my spiel here. So uh, what is Command Modern Operations? Well, Command Modern Operations, for those of you who know the Harpoon games or Fleet Command or any of those, is basically an all-encompassing air, ground, underwater, naval Every unit that ever existed ever sort of game smashed into one in the terms of sort of a tactical slash theater sort of strategy game. Now, the base game itself, of course, comes with a bunch of different options. If you actually come in here, you have all sorts of really, really cool scenarios. Uh, believe it or not, I spend very little time with scenarios. Uh, that, you know, that's kind of sounds scandalous from somebody who's played it and kind of been the voice of command for so many years. But believe it or not, you know, a lot of the time in this program, I actually spend developing my own scenarios, and that's actually what we're going to be doing today. So what I'm going to do is, uh, from our main menu, we're in 1328.7. Uh, one thing i got to say right now is there are a couple of known bugs in 1328.7 that are, have already been addressed in the next version that's going to be coming out pretty soon. So keep in mind, like, some things might not work right, and I'll kind of comment on that as we go, but they're already being addressed. So I'm going to come down here and create a new scenario. Now, inside of commands, when you're creating a new scenario, believe it or not, there's there, this, is, this is what you get. You get the globe and not much else. And now that's what's so amazing about this program is that it actually has the whole globe. The first thing I usually do in our scenario today is going to take place over here in Iran. Uh, so of course, uh, things uh, change around a little bit as we do it, is we have to actually place everything that we intend to use, but there are actually some tools built in to kind of make our lives a little bit simpler. Now, when you're first learning this game, as tempting as it is to go run over there and uh, hit up you know, the tutorial missions, which are absolutely fantastic, I actually recommend that you open up the scenarios that you're interested in playing and open them from there so you can actually see kind of what's going on in the backdrop as you're working through a particular scenario. Scenario. I find that makes it easier. Plus, if you need nuclear weapons to finish the other guy off, you can just get them, kind of a thing like that. So what I'm going to do is set up a very, very basic scenario. We're going to be doing a good old-fashioned strike on an airfield. Now, the reason I pick an airfield for my target here is because of the fact that when a lot of people, one of the most common questions, I swear I've answered it hundreds of times now, is how do you disable an airfield? And that's exactly what we're going to try to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start by getting a couple different details. I'll give us some scenario times. I'll go ahead and I'll make it a nice and tw uh, modern scenario. We'll go ahead and do this in January. We'll make it, uh, let's see here, 0930. We'll go ahead and copy those. So this is the, where the scenario starts. This is the current time. I press OK, and you can see up at the tippy top here, it's January 1st, 2020. You can see the uh, Zulu time, which if I go over here, of course, the local time is going to change time zones. And you've also gone and see up top where my local time is, which is about 1330 in the afternoon. That's a little late, actually. We probably want to make this a little little bit earlier in the day here. Whoops, that's going to be a little bit too much. Go ahead and pop something like that in there. Hit OK. 7.30. I like that a little better. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add in some sides here. We'll keep it nice and simple here. We'll make a run. And of course, we'll grab ourselves another side. We'll call it NATO. I don't know why NATO is down here. I'm sure somebody annoyed somebody. And again, I'm not going to get into the tactical nature. We'll go ahead and set up the sides here. Again, keeping it super duper simple. We're going to make them hostile to start. We're not going to make them unfriendly or have to do any of those like little scenario shenanigans. Again, we're trying to keep this a relatively basic here. Uh, one thing we do want to do, though, is under Iran here, we're going to take its proficiency and reduce it a little bit. And we're going to take a NATO's proficiency and we're going to kind of leave it alone. Keep in mind, proficiency is kind of a catch-all term for things rating from, you know, how capable you are to how quickly can you get a missile launch to how low to the ground you can fly to how good your damage control process is. That's what that proficiency is. And let's be honest here. Uh, if this were a little more realistic, this would probably be the proficiency ratings of the two sides. Uh, one of the things that you have to know is that regular proficiency basically assumes that you have some combat experience, which at this time, there's really not a lot. But um, for now, we'll kind of leave it that way. 
Now, there's another thing that's really valuable here, too. And we're not going to change that because we're not adding any civvies, but that's kind of a fun thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, double-click on Iran here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves uh, some interesting targets. Now, when I do this, uh, when I play the game, at least, uh, one of the things I like to do is I kind of like to customize my views before I start getting too carried away with a lot of the different stuff that goes on sort of in a scenario. So one of the things I'll do is I'll actually come up here, and as much as everybody loves this, I actually shut that off. I find it to be kind of bright. And uh, believe it or not, most of the time, I actually like to play in uh, one of the open topo maps, or I like to do kind of stamen where you have the terrain. The huge advantage to the terrain mode is if you're building something like i uh, will come down here and keep it really so we're going down to bondor boss here if you want to build something such as an airfield um as you zoom in you'll actually get to see the individual details of the airfield all highlighted for you because everything's basically going to be one giant gray so if i actually come in here uh, i had it a second ago let me zoom in whoop too far there we go you can actually see just how simple it is to see the individual components of a, a target, for example. Or if I'm like trying to attack a building or something, I can actually zoom in and see the individual buildings down here, which makes it a lot easier. Now, the topo map they give you actually works pretty much the same way. And if I switch to open topo real fast, you can see, look at how easy this is to spot individual structures and different items that I might be interested in doing in a given scenario. Uh, the downside for this one, of course, is it only has so much zoom that it is capable of. But if we actually wanted to sit here and construct this entire airport, I can actually zoom in and be like, oh, there's a medium building here, and it looks like there's a tower here, and maybe there's a barracks here, maybe there's an ammunition, this could be a control tower right here. And I can actually stick in these individual components on their own. Now, when you're building quick missions like the mission that we're uh, setting up here, one of the things I actually will do is I will borrow the things that already exist inside of the program rather than trying to rebuild all of it on my own just because it can take a very long time. You know, especially if you're watching this and you're a new player to command, you have to be careful of this thing called scenario creep, where basically you start with something really, really simple, and it just sort of snowballs, and uh, suddenly you have 16,000 units, and you've recreated every single building in an entire country. Um, that's that's ridiculous. And it's... I, you could do that, but um, it's, it's going to get pretty painful for you really, really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and double check to make sure I'm on the side I want to be, which is Iran. I'm going to go swing down to import, export units, load units. And believe it or not, they have a bunch of built-in things we can summon. So if I ever scroll down here and I'll say we hit up Iran, for example, look at all this good stuff they have, including Bandar Abbas. Boop, boop, just like that. So now if I close that, I can actually see here on my map that that exists. Unfortunately, my uh, maps here is making things a little too bright. So now, believe it or not, check this out. Somebody actually modeled this for us already, which makes this so much simpler for us to actually do the work now because I can see clearly that, you know, this is roughly what it is. Now, I know some of you are probably sitting here. Can you turn the topo map back on for a second so we can see how well they did? you can see how nice of a job they actually did as far as recreating a lot of the components. And I get a kick out of the fact they recognize the hardened aircraft shelters on this side. They give me some tarmac space on this side. They'll put things like magazines and stuff on this side. But uh, more importantly, they provided us with the oh so important, uh, this is the runway access point. And you're probably saying, okay, so players who know this game, of course, know the runway access point is the magical target of any airfield. And we'll get into that in a little bit, as I've said, trying to answer that question. So let's go ahead and uh, put some different details in here. So in Bender of Asia, um, this is a major, it's an international airport. There are some military aircraft here. And people always ask me, what did you source? How do you know X, Y, and Z? Well, one of the things I love about this is if you want to nuke your house, you can nuke your house with every nuclear weapon in the entire Cold War in one whack, if you want. It doesn't matter. And that's what I love about this program. This is why I have far more hours than anybody should have or have kind of a thing like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the airfield itself. And since I'm in Map Editor, you'll notice I have a button up here in the upper right that allows me to actually edit aircrafts. And now the cool thing here is I, if I press this, it's going to pop up a little screen that has, I kid you not, all the airplanes, if it flies and it exists, and it's from 1979 on, it is on this list. But it's more than that, because I can go like this. Let's say I want to do a call sign. I meant to do class. My bad, my bad. Let's say I'm going to do an F-16. Which one do you want? Uh, I have a CM here. What if you want just an F-16A? Okay, which version of the F-16A would you have? And they're all here. I can even do an F-16XL if you're one of those people who agree with me that it's cooler than an F-15E. It's all here. And actually, I love the fact that they put this right at the top here to sort of give you that little hint. But the cool thing is if I want a bunch of Iranian F-16XLs, I can stick it in there. If I want to give them uh, some MiG-29s, what version would you like? 
But one of the things that's so nice about this program that I get such a kick out of is, you know, I can come down here and I can actually click her on. And of course, I can set, click from for dates. And I can see when different aircraft actually came in and out of service. Uh, for example, we know that they have a lot of Phantoms. So we have F4Ds and F4Es. F4E is the correct Phantom, by the way, in my opinion. But that's just me. And you can even see things like this Mohair um, UAV here actually came out of service in 97. So if we're being accurate here, we could actually take the time to actually go through it. And of course, we have F-14As. If we want to have some fun, we could have the 1980s F-14A that had the AIM-54s. Uh, we could do MiG-21s. We could do things that were basically stolen from Iraq during the, um, the Persian Gulf War, the first one, 1990. And all these things are all located in here that I can just summon. Now, one thing that I will share really, really quickly, which is, again, so fascinating about this, is if I were to go up here and actually click on my database viewer, all this information is accessible. So if I wanted to, I could do, let's go back to our F-14A for a second here. We'll go to the wrong one from Iran. And here are the details. But notice the level of detail and depth this program has. And again, people who uh, watch me all the time, this is a review. For those of you who are new, this is incredible. Tells me what it is, how big it is, how big the crew is, what its weights are, how long it takes to lock and to destroy something. It tells me its takeoff landing distance, climb rate, agility. It's got how durable it is. It's got where's the armor, its visibility. It has all of the different sensors on board. We have Analog 9, which is, yeah, it's decent. We have all of its countermeasures. And we have all of the different loadouts. We have communications radios. We have easy how easy it is to detect, different types of theming. We have different types of fuel consumptions at different altitudes. Everything is here for all the units that existed militarily. Honestly, you could buy this game just for the database. It's that good kind of thing. So what we'll do here is that we'll go ahead and just pick the, our little AIM-54 here just for fun. And we'll scroll down and look how cool this is. I can actually come here and hit this and it will tell me everything about this radar. And obviously it's not gonna tell me how far it can see a MiG-29, for example. That depends on the math, but what does it tell me? It tells me how many targets it can eliminate. It gives me an idea of the generation. It tells me what kind of information I can have. It tells me how often it uh, updates, basically. It has its range. And one of the cool things is a back on F-14, it even shows how tight the nose is on this. Now notice here, my search arc is much, much tighter than my wide arc. DCS fans, you're screaming at me going, no, no, I can make it to us. Let me do an eight bar scan or something like that. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter kind of a thing like that. And it's just, like I said, absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, stack the deck a little bit here. So we're going to go back to our airport here. Uh, Control F6, by the way, if uh, you're kind of following along with this mission as we go. So we'll go grab it. Um, let's see, 1990. We'll, we'll We'll stack the deck a bit here, and uh, we'll do 12 here. Uh, call sign, um, what was it from the movie? I can't remember the movie. It was a Hot Shots, a part, oh, yeah. yeah. Had all the different, like, uh, we could do Baba Kanush or something. I don't know. I feel like there's something wrong about that. So, um, uh, we'll just leave it. We'll make it automatically generate one of these. And, of course, it adds it on here. And one of the cool things is if you swing back to their screen here, you can actually see how there's this little icon that tells us that we actually have uh, people at this particular shelter. So if I click on this one right now and actually hit edit aircraft, that is the aircraft at that specific shelter. Now, there are people out there who actually like to come in here and edit all of these individually and put individual airplanes in individual shelters. Go for it. Um, again, by the way, you have to press the 9 key on your numpad to switch between group mode and not group mode, because otherwise you won't be able to select them, as you can kind of see right there. So it's it's up to you. Again, for our simplicity's sake, we're going to do that. We'll go ahead and add in some more juicy targets here. Um, we've got some F-14s. We'll do some F-4Es, because uh, why not? Uh, upgraded Project Duran. Well, it's after 2015, so we'll go through 24 of those on there. Uh, what else should we do? We should add some, uh, what's, uh, what do I want to do? Two lives. Oh, again, let's see what we can throw in here. We'll throw up a bunch, 604 of them. So we'll add 10. Uh, why not? And you know what? Just for color, we'll go through some money. Uh, I think they had the hind E. No, no, no. They had Cobras. What am I saying? Of course, I'm forgetting my own countries here. That's embarrassing. Let's see. Iran, 2022, 2013. That looks pretty good. Tufan. That looks pretty good. We'll add 12 of those, too. Now that we have a little bit of a stop populating our airfield here, uh, we're giving ourselves a plenty of juicy targets for the purposes of actually, you know, engaging, which is what we're going to start doing in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the F6 key on the keyboard, and that's going to bring up a list. This is what you would see, by the way, if you're in a conventional mode, where you'd have the ability to basically see, like if you're playing the scenario not in editor mode, this is what you would see. But one of the things you'll notice is all these aircraft are red right now. And uh, the reason for that is they're telling us, I've got no loadout and I'm just parked. So if I took this aircraft and hit launched individually, uh, nothing would happen because unfortunately it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have a job yet. So what we can do is we can actually come down here and you know, we can actually change what it is. You know, I can right click on this and you can ready arm it. Um, go ahead and change the different items. So what I like to do is I actually like to hold down the shift key and I can arm them all 
in one whack here. So I'm gonna press ready arm. Now you're gonna notice that all of these loadouts right now are all italicized. Uh, the reason for that is because of the fact that we don't actually have any of these different items available. Now, one of the things that they simulate really well in command is logistics. And there are no missiles anywhere in this place that they can actually draw from. And if we wanted to, and I'll show you how, like again, how sophisticated you can get very quickly here. I can see here, let's see here, AIM 97Es. I can come up here and say, okay, that's 181 is the AIM 70s, AIM 70. Don't forget AIM 70. Let's see here. I'll go ahead and close this real quick. Oh, we need to go find the ammo facility here, ammo shelter. So I can actually go here edit it and I can actually edit what's inside of it. So I could come in here and I could say, add some weapon, filter by keyboards, and I can actually say aim 7E. Ooh, helps if you type it incorrectly. Aim 7E and I could add, I don't know, a thousand of these if I wanted. You gotta be careful, make sure you get the right one here. So let's add, um, I don't know, I'll add uh, well, 10,000, why not? That's an awful lot of those, but too bad. Let's add 50. Now watch what happens when I go like this, click on F6. If I were to go back to this one, hit ready arm, you'll notice the fact, ta-da, it actually recognizes the fact there it is. Uh, sure, Lad, if you could give me a rough uh, detail of what you're interested in, I might be able to help you out with a little bit. But uh, for our purposes, obviously this would be quite a pain in the butt to go through and have to load those magazines. So one of the things they do for you, which thank you people at command for making our lives easier, is we can actually go up to the magazines and when we add the different weapons and stuff like that, we can say only show weapons compatible with the aircraft that exist here. This is awesome because it's only going to give us the different weapons that you can actually get at this airfield. Now, I know some people are like, well, can you do one of these things? Or you go like that, hold on shift and go like that. No, <laughs> you're going to have to actually still go through, click this one, add 100, click this one, add 100. Uh, the other method, of course, you can use, and again, for people who are not familiar with this game, is you can go up to editor, you can go up to scenario settings, and you can actually press OK there. You can actually tell it you have unlimited ammo. And uh, the nice thing with that, of course, is you have unlimited ammo. The downside is now the Iranians have, you know, anti-ship missiles, you have nuclear weapons. Maybe you don't want to press that button. Uh, you want to be very careful with some of these, by the way. We're actually going to leave that one off. Communications disruption, that works fine for me. So now if we go back to the airfield, hit the F6 key again, you'll notice when I go to ready arm, all of these are available. So again, for the purpose of our scenario, we're gonna shoot up this airfield real nice and prevent them from taking off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of them. Again, I held down the shift key, ready arm, and we'll go ahead and put them some nice yummy things here. Uh, this looks cool, I like that, let's do that. Press that button and you can see they're all now green, they're ready for launch. Let's grab our handy fandy our H ones And we're gonna assume these guys are basically equipped for reserve. You know, they're just training exercises, kind of a thing like that. So we'll leave them like that. Actually not reserve. We'll actually set them to be fairies so they carry plenty of fuel. So they're nice tasty targets for us. Grab our F-14s here. We'll go ahead and load them up all sorts of yummy stuff too. Look at this, a Hawk missile. Yes, a Hawk. So we'll go ahead and now throw that on there as well. Minimize that. We'll go to our tupelives here, grab them all, and we're going to order them to be maintenance. Now, the interesting thing is people always ask me, uh, why would you ever, ever use the maintenance loadout? Because it takes the aircraft out of the availability pile. The reason you do this is to have targets, if you're ever kind of wondering. It's also a great simulation of some of the things you'll actually see in a real airfield. You'd never have this many aircraft ready to go, but I need to give the F-35 something to shoot at. So <laughs> that's why we have that many aircraft there. So my airport is uh, pretty much ready to go. Our target's ready to rock. Uh, we definitely want to consider some kind of defense, though. I don't want to leave this one all alone. Uh, when we show up with a bunch of cruise missiles in a little while and absolutely smoosh this thing, we want to make sure that uh, we're kind of ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, of course, since I'm in map editor mode, I have this ability. If you weren't a map editor, you'd have to do these things manually. I'm going to press insert. I'm going to go find a nice little hill nearby and go ahead and click. A real quick pro tip, by the way, uh, if you actually go up to view, and there's this great thing that says uh, relief. If you go to relief layer, it shows you where all the hills are. Now, the reason this is so super cool is, uh, like, let's say I'm planning a strike or something like that. Oh, obviously come down here and come around kind of a thing, which is what we'll do with the cruise missiles. But for me, who is planning, oh, where am I going to put my early warning radar? Haha, <laughs> of course, it's going to go over here kind of a thing like that on the absolute highest point. And that looks pretty good right there. Head over to the facility real fast. We'll get ourselves an early warning radar here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the tips. Everybody knows that. But um, we'll go ahead and use something a little more around in here. Here, Let's see here. Scroll down. We're just going to get ourselves an EW radar. EW radar. And again, if we want to find more facts about it, we can click any. Ah, dog ear. Oh, my God. They're there again. Spoon rest. Eh. I want something a little bit bigger here. TRS. A Volex is actually pretty good. Let's just see what we have for this one. I want something a little bit bigger. A Volex X. What do we got? 145? That's not bad. We can work with that. And then we also have a TRS. This is actually an, an SSM radar. Uh, oh my gosh, that one looks a little more modern. What do we got here? 275. Yeah, that's what I call an early warning radar. Let's go press that one real quick. 
And now one of the things that uh, shock people when it comes to a command is that believe it or not, after I place a unit, it doesn't just start turning a radar on and uh, looking around. That's just not how it works. We can actually instruct it to turn itself on. So what we can do is after selecting it, if you come over here, you're actually gonna notice there's some controls over here that gives us direct control of that unit. These controls are also gonna be available if you're playing in regular single player without being in map editor mode. But what they basically will do is give you the ability to turn stuff on and off. So if I actually were to come over here to the sensors window, for example, you can see that it says MCON, that's just emissions control. If I say, no, ignore, you'll notice I now have the ability to turn individual things on. Like for example, I can come over here and turn on the radar. If I wanna be lazy, I can click this little checkbox here, which turns on all the radars. Now, the reason that can be useful, of course, is we wanna see things. The reason it's not useful, as you'll see in a minute, is we're gonna blow it up because it turned himself on. But if you actually zoom out a little bit, you can see just how wide of a range this is gonna have. It's not going to make any difference. There's going to be a bunch of F-35s knocking on the door anyway. And of course, there's the identification problem. So we'll have to deal with that a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and shut off that. It's going to make me absolutely crazy. And we'll add a little bit more defense here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and toss up an SA-5, which has a staggering range on it. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this one, it, it's excessive. Like uh, if I click on it real quickly, that's its range. Now, keep in mind, uh, this is one of those things that surprise people with command, that just because it's in range doesn't mean it can hit it. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things you're going to see when this weapon, if it gets actually any action, I have a feeling my um, like the F-35s will come steamroll that thing. But the reality is, is um, you can't necessarily hit something that's inside of this arc. Uh, for example, if I take my little airplane and I duck behind this mountain, guess what? that missile will self-destruct. If I'm trying to take pot shots at people over here in Dubai, I just hide behind the stuff and cutter here and I'm, I'm gone. They can't do anything for me. Likewise, I could just outmaneuver the weapon. I could basically turn around and fly away from it. It couldn't keep up with me. All those things are possibilities and they're all accurately simulated once so we start getting to the shenanigans and goings on. Now, one of the things I had mentioned earlier was the fact that this guy right here is an early warning radar and this SA-5 here has his own ability to turn his sensors on. Inside of command, the units are smart enough to know not to turn their radars on unless they absolutely are ready to start shooting. But one of the things we could actually do if we wanted to is we could come in here and activate its battalion radar. And this is basically going to represent its kind of organic sensing capability. I'm actually not going to do that. And uh, the reason I don't want to do that is I have an early warning radar that will give this guy a good heads up whether or not he needs to be operable and start shooting at things. It's very, very tempting to activate his radar. But if we do that, we're just giving away what he is. Uh, one of the things I see players do to kind of add a nice little layer of complexity to it is what they'll do is they'll grab a P-50 radar and they'll put it somewhere else or the grab a square pair and they'll put it somewhere else. Square pair, by the way, is gigantic. Uh, actually, I'm hoping you can see a picture of this. I don't think they're going to give us a picture of the square pair, but believe me when I say that thing is huge. Eh, they got to give me a square pair. Ah, I don't have a square pair. So let's go ahead and put a P50 in here. Humbug, I say. Humbug. So it looks to me. Oh, it's reveted this way. Let's see. Do I get anything? Do I get anything? Do I get anything? Ah, there we go. So if I do P dash, uh, you do a P19 and fake it. Yeah, let's do a P20 or P90 or something like that and fake it. So I'm actually going to grab this a long track. That's uh, Iranian defense. And we're going to pretend that that radar is actually a uh, radar. So check out how cool this is. I can come in here and say, uh, give me a P40. Head down to Iran real quick. And then I can take this unit, rename it. Instead of a P40, I could rename it a P50. Press OK. And then what I could do is I could actually change the sensors on board of this to simulate as if it was the actual P50 that we have over here. So by clicking this real quick, I could actually come over to sensors. You can see I got long track. I can actually shut that off, click on it, remove the sensor. Keep in mind, you can't do this in regular. Add sensor, and now I could actually grab that other radar. You could even set the arcs and everything like that. So if I come here and say P50, ta-da, there's my bar lock C, just like that. So now if I flip this thing on, uh, anytime they're doing ESM work, they will automatically be picking up this radar, even though it's not coming from this battery. And again, those are little teeny tiny details that uh, scenario designers really love to throw in to make things a little more complicated for the other player who's trying to come back here and kind of smoosh all this stuff, which like I said, don't worry, we'll get to that. Uh, we want a couple more surprises, of course. I'm just going to press 9 on my numpad there. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more. Um, you got to have a rapier. It's just, it's, it's required, if I could spell it correctly. I love how they said it's no longer a missile, it's a hittle because it's a so capable kind of a thing like that. There's one right there. It's a blind fire, which means it's the radar version. This is going to give us a really fun surprise later on. I'm not going to turn the sensors on. I'll just let it fire when my F-35 gets too close. It's going to happen. You know, it's just kind of the nature of the beast, so to speak. So I'll leave that right there. I'm perfectly fine with that. And of course, uh, you can't have anything without having a little bit of surprise. So we'll go ahead and throw in an SA-14 too, which is basically, uh, you know, some guy with a little rocket launcher on his shoulder. <laughs> 
That'd be funny. If this is the thing that taps the F-35, I have quite a smile on my face there. So I'll grab that one. I'll go ahead and copy and paste one in the other one. This basically represents the guy getting angry and running out of his little Jeep, kind of saying, what are you doing? And popping one of those into the air. Uh, one more thing, of course, I will do is I'm just going to come over here. A quick tip, by the way, if you hold your mouse over the shore, when it says depth, it means you can't put ground units in it, even though it looks like it's on ground. Like you zoom in and see how this looks like Earth. It's not. It's because the map is separate from the actual height map. So if I bring my mouse right here, we'll go ahead and put an observation post in there. I like that. Um, observation post, eh, we'll just do a little tiny one. And the nice thing here is you can take the smallest observer. Oh my God, that's a real observation post. And one of the things I like to do as a programmer here, as a designer of scenarios, is I always come in here and throw in some kind of generic uh, LLTV. So basically you're simulating a night vision goggles. Like if I type in night vision, yeah, there we go. So we can do um, second generation night vision goggles. Go ahead and toss those in. The nice advantage here is if it is nighttime, they have a slightly easier time of seeing your aircraft. It also makes it easier for them to identify incoming enemy aircraft, which they kind of need to do so they can start popping things up at you. Now, a couple more things I'm going to add to our scenario just to have a little bit of fun. We'll go ahead and throw up a couple ships here. Let's see here. We'll do a surface ship. Oh, they've got all sorts of PCFGs and stuff like that. We'll go ahead and grab a couple of those. Again, the insert key is your magic button there. Uh, there's the Bender Abbas right there. There's actually two of them on 1974. These things are kind of small, if I recall correctly. Uh, the 108. Oh, take it back. That's pretty big. We'll keep it. Oh, what's it pack in here? We have a 20 millimeter and we have a 23 millimeter. That's, uh, not great. Now we're going to need something with a little more severity here. Uh, here we go. Sea killer replaced with C802s. Nice. Anti-ship ship. Oh, by the way, if you have an issue where all your ranges are starting to kind of merge into each other, um, all you have to do is go to map settings and set this to selected unit, and it will only show you the ranges of the thing you're clicking on, so they're not all kind of going all over the place on each other. If you're playing like a really, really big scenario, it gets ridiculous how um, crazy that can get on you. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set myself up a generic little pattern in this way, uh, set them to nice and slow. Again, you can control the actual speed of the units. Like if I want it to be weird, I could come in here and say, you, go 11 knots. He'll do it because I told him to. And again, if you need this level of fidelity, you need this granularity, it's available. If not, you could be like me and come over here and say, just, uh, just go, go cruising, just do your thing. Now, one thing we do, though, is, um, again, for a little bit, not necessarily realism, but just one of those kind of little details, is we can come in here, shut off the MCON again, and we can actually find the DECA. Now, for those of you who are not sure what a DECA is, it's, it's like this little kind of, you know, civilian radar thing and one of the reasons i like it is because of the fact that it shows up as a civilian radar so when we're doing our reconnaissance a little later on of course so we'll know exactly oh it's a civilian vessel we have to get closer to identify oh it's a military vessel we got to be careful kind of a thing like that so i'm pretty happy with this side i'm not going to go uh, too too crazy here because um the details we'll see a little bit later on are going to be sort of centered around you know how do you disable this airfield efficiently and uh, we're going to kind of do that part next so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm happy. I'm going to do my quick little save as and go save it as a scenario here. Of course, I always name my initial scenarios the same thing, and then I go rename them later. I don't know how many copies of that file I have. I don't want to know. So now we're going to switch over to the other side here so we can start, you know, kind of planning our little strategy here. So I'm going to select all. We're going to go over to NATO. And uh, we're, whoop, NATO. Notice, by the way, my graphics got all kind of silly looking. That's because when you switch sides, it resets this. I don't know why it does that. I kind of wish it didn't do that. And... You know, I always like to joke about Uncle Demetrius there you know, when he's watching and listening, kind of a thing like that. But it's like, can we have drawing tools one and uh, number two? Can we have it keep it? You know what I mean. Anyway, so what I would do now is we're going to go ahead and get our allies set up. And we're going to do a couple different things here. Uh, we're going to be interested, of course, in demonstrating some of the different weapon systems we have at our disposal, as well as, you know, kind of some of the... What's the best way? You know, just a little bit of strategy. Again, we're trying to keep these really basic for today for people who have uh, not had an opportunity to play or not sure what this game's all about. So we're going to go down here. Uh, we got our you know, Dubai. Of course, we have Qatar and all that stuff. I'm going to go up to editor. And um, instead of actually adding a bit of pieces in, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to switch over to topo mode, which is going to cause all sorts of uh, nasty graphics to sort of... I mean, look at this. This feels like a Windows 95 GPS application kind of a thing like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because it actually highlights all the no-fly zones, which I think is, is kind of cool. And uh, the reason I want that is because I want to basically, if I can get zoomed in enough without, you're going to get this happening, by the way. You are at the mercy of the speed of the servers. You know, I have a two gigabit line coming into my house right now, and that still happens. But now if I zoom in a little bit, ta-da, we have ourselves our airfield that we're going to be operating on of today. Now, some people are going to be sitting here saying, um, so could you go ahead and uh, go do your load inst thing like you did earlier? I'm not going to do that. You know, coming from a scenario designer who's, I've literally played this game for five, six years now. 
Uh, you don't want to do that if you don't have to. So instead, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, well, first of all, I'll check to make sure I'm on NATO side here. I'm going to press the Insert key, click somewhere in the middle of the base, and I'm going to insert a unit that is a single unit airfield. So if I do a single unit, woo, SIN, you know what? I'm just going to do it the easy way. Switch off of Iran here. That probably would help. Type in airfield. Apparently, it's still on Iran mode here. Go away. So we have a bunch of different airfields here. Um, you can see the different lengths, different number. The 2x just refers to runway. And you have these things. And people are like, well, how do you know how long the runway is? And it's actually pretty easy. If you press Control D and you just go ahead and measure it, you can see here that it is two nautical miles. And now uh, people are always like, what is two nautical miles? What does that even mean? Uh, two nautical miles, just multiply by two. And uh, you'll be close enough as far as your airfield length goes. So uh, two nautical miles, that's a really, really, really long runway. So again, that's one of those little things that you get. It's going to be about 3,200 meters is what it comes out to be. And uh, I'm looking closely, and I can see that we have, uh, that's a standard runway. And it looks like a runway grade uh, taxi. Too bad. I'm just going to do a 1x 3,200 here. Now, the other thing I like to do, too, is after defining this, let me go ahead and hide all this junk that you don't actually hold on to it, is we have to tell it what direction the runway is pointing. And uh, the easiest way to do that, again, is if you press Control D and you just drag the line. I know it's hard to see. I can see that this angle right here, oh, my God, as if I can see what that angle is right now. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've got, I wish I had a little shadow. That's 309 degrees, so it's runway 31. So if I actually were to come over to this, right-click on it, Scenario Editor, I could actually sit in here and define the correct angle that the runway is actually coming at. Keep in mind, runways, airplanes will always take off in that direction, no matter what the finger quote wind is. So they're always going to be going that way. So let's go ahead and hide that real quick because uh, it's slowly burning my eyeballs out here. And we have our airport, and I'll say airbase. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Like I said, I'm not going to do anything too, too complicated. I just don't need to for the purposes of it. Uh, one thing I like to recommend also is that if you right click on this and I uh, go ahead and head over to Scenario Editor, shut the auto detectability of this off. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, one of the downsides to this being a unit is that it'll appear in the other guy's targeting scopes. And if they have nuclear weapons and they're set on just shoot things, you end up with a bunch of ICBMs uh, raining down on your, you know, little airbase. Uh, the other thing, of course, just saying is how come we can't see any of the other guy's stuff? Uh, the reason we can't is because we haven't run the scenario yet. You can always press Control-V, by the way, to switch to God's eye view, and you can kind of see clearly how it's all kind of spread around. All right, so the process here is going to be exactly the same as it was on the other side. We're actually going to have two different forces we're going to be working together with on this mission today. Uh, we're going to have an Air Force component, and of course, we're going to have a Naval component helping us out as well. So I'm going to put the Naval component into place first. I'm going to press the Insert key, click right there. Go ahead and click on submarine. And of course, which one do you think I was going to use? I'm going to grab myself the SSGN Ohio here. The Michigan's kind of fun because it is something called IRPCS. For you, those of you who are not familiar with this, it's a ballistic missile. It's an HGV, a hypersonic glide vessel. It's fast uh, vehicle, by the way, not vessel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one, press OK. And if I click on this, uh, you'll notice it carries not one, not 17, 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, which... Um, it could win the scenario on its own, to be honest. And uh, what I have to actually do is I'm going to click on this guy real quick, click on uh, WRA, and I'm actually going to order him not to do that because if he does, he's going to ruin all the fun before I can have any fun myself. So I'm actually going to tell him to hold fire. I'm going to forget that I told him to hold fire, but um, if I don't do this, he's just going to go, woo, target, and just basically drop a deck of cruise missiles into our target. But the F-35s gets dibs, so you go sit there and you relax, Mr. SSGN. All right, so let's go ahead and get some stuff at our airbase. I'm going to click here and press Control F6 again. We need a couple things to help us out here. Uh, one thing is I love to get some AWACS actions, so uh, we'll go ahead and grab ourselves an E3. If you're not sure what uh, E3 we have, uh, Saudi Arabia is right there. We could borrow theirs. We could also borrow you know, an American version. We could buy our French version. This is supposed to be a NATO operation here, so I'm actually going to grab the E3 here. Uh, we're going to grab two of them. I'm going to press the F6 key. I'm going to grab this to Kohog 1. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, come on, we'll fix that in a second. But I'm just going to go up and give them a quick mission. A uh, quick, by the way, is simply saying that um, if I have to land in a hurry, just refuel me, get me back in the air, air one more time. Otherwise, you're looking at like a six to nine hour turnaround time for some of these planes. So uh, I recommend it if you can. So he's ready to go. I'm going to rename him real quick, just for my own sanity. I'll rename. This is going to be Eyeball 1-1. One, one. Oh, we'll do 1-1. One one. We'll do a hardcore DCS here. We'll come over here, rename. And this will be Eyeball 1-2, just so I can keep them apart as I need it. Um, so we need some escorts for these guys. I'm not just going to send up these extremely expensive planes. Oh, by the way, I remember I had the SA-5. Uh, yeah, that's going to be in range. So we're going to have to deal with that before we can actually launch them. We'll deal with it. Don't worry. So I'll press my Control F6 again. We'll go ahead and get some escorts here. It is, uh, we'll get some uh, F-35s here. Actually, what I'm going to do. Let me see if I can just type in Lightning here. And I should be able to get the one that I want. Ah, here it is. Bingo. Oh, that's the wrong Lightning. That'd be fun to bring out one of those, don't you think? 
All right, actually, we'll try the regular F-35 here. I believe, I'm trying to think the UK gets them. Okay, they get the Spear version, they get the Bs, and they also get the As, I believe. Here we go, nice. F-35A, United Kingdom Royal Air Force, sweet. Um, what's a really, really British thing? Uh, chicken, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. So we'll go ahead and say how many of these we want. We'll do 12, and they're F-35s. I'm not gonna need a lot of these. So we'll go grab them. We're gonna arm all of them. Nowhere in the universe will we have all 12 of these available for an actual mission. But again, for the purposes of this, we're gonna do it. It's a ready arm. We got plenty of yummy things that we can carry here. We got all these uh, AMRAMs. We have some ASRAMs. We have some internals. We have some SRAMs, all these different unit and tools. And of course, conveniently, we also have the ability to carry a pair. Two, a pair is two of these uh, lovely Mark 82 bombs, which are awesome. So I'm actually gonna ready those immediately and uh, we're ready to go. These guys are not really equipped for air to air. You can see right now it's a C5 and got the paveway Mark IV. This is great and it's gonna dent up that runway beautifully, which don't worry, we'll have them do it, but they're not really gonna be much of a sweeping aircraft here. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm also gonna add some more. I'll just go ahead and give myself something. Ah, <laughs> that'll do it. Uh, let's see, the F-15EX, which could be a very fun, very amusing aircraft for this purpose, but we're having fun, so let's go all out here. So I'm going to grab myself an F-22, because I can. Uh, let's see here, GPU, small diameter bomb. Ah, it's like cheating. So uh, let's see here, how can we really unfairly stack this deck here? We lose the HMCS. Oh, that's disappointing. We have Link 16. Man, these are fantastic versions of this aircraft. Honestly, I need four of these would be probably enough to uh, win this scenario, but I'm just demonstrating how you can stack the deck here. F-22s, we'll grab them all, ready arm, and we'll make sure these guys are ready to rock here. So standard internal gets us, look at how many missiles this thing carries. And of course, if we want to, we can get the AIM-9X3s, which, it's not fair. These things are so not fair. And uh, you'll see what I mean when we actually get to the engagement here. So those guys are good. That's uh, plenty of aircraft. I don't, don't need any more than that. So the one thing else we, of course, want to do is we want to grab ourselves a little bit of some carry operations here, too, because why not? So I'm going to hit insert again. We'll get ourselves an aircraft carrier. Uh, let's see here. Uh, surface ship. Uh, let's see here. We'll do CVN. Oh, which one do we want today? Which one do we want today? Oh, we'll do the John Stennis. That's a pretty easy one. He's looking pretty happy. He's not carrying anybody right now. And because I'm a jerk, we'll put some F-35s on him too. <laughs> this is just not fair. Let's see here. 2019. I like that. Oh, uh, we'll do 12 again. Oh my God, it's 21. That's way too many. I didn't say this scenario was designed to be balanced. I said the scenario is to demonstrate the capabilities of the program. Uh, let's see here. So we have JSALs, which are great. Uh, let's see, JSALs. We'll do internal ones. JSALs are basically, if you haven't seen one of these things, it's a giant box with wing. Yeah, there it goes. And uh, basically what it will do is I'll release this thing. It just sort of glides very, very long distances. The interesting thing here is, uh, let me see if I can find it for you. Uh, yeah, here it is. Notice it's barely detectable by radar. And uh, that's going to be important for us because we're going to use these guys basically to dent stuff up. These other items here that are really, really good too, like the GBU-31s, they work great, but they just don't have the reach. Go ahead and add that. And now we're ready to go. I think uh, everything we could possibly need for this scenario has been equipped. Uh, some of you, of course, are like, oh, uh, well, shouldn't this guy get an escort? Pfft, you guys just want everything. So we'll go ahead and uh, stack the deck some harder. And we'll add the zoom vaults here. Uh, SM2, I like that. Go ahead and grab that version. Uh, this will be the escort. And you can see it's not the longest range. It's not really the best carrier escort out there, but I'm not worried about that at all. So let's go ahead and group those two guys. We're going to order them to kind of do a little one of these sort of things here in a little box. And again, we don't have to do that much. We'll set these guys to creep speed. And uh, let me check, check to make sure that this is working properly. Now it is. And uh, one thing we will do is we will have the zoom vault help us out with radar just to kind of act as sort of like an early sort of AWACS thing. So again, I'm going to go over to sensors here. Radars, we can turn them all on, not needed. Honestly, just turn in the end spy here and that will be plenty. So if I actually zoom out a little bit, you can see that this is his radar coverage here, which is absolutely fantastic. He'll be able to keep more than enough eye on things before we can get the E8 in the air. Now there's something you have to remember here is that we do have that E8 at our disposal, but the moment we launch it, it's gonna get shot down by an SA-5 and we're all gonna feel really stupid about it because that was an expensive plane to get cheap shot by you know, a 1960s surface air missile system. So let's go ahead and uh, save our scenario, and now we're ready to actually begin the execution sequence here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, and I'm going to wait a few moments, and pause again. And what you'll observe is the fact that all these items uh, suddenly appeared on the screen. And uh, one of the things you have to do, of course, see how one second has passed? You have to actually go back up here, and I uh, just change this like that, press OK, save it again. And now our scenario is ready to rock. 
Now, this is where a lot of people who play Command uh, start to get a little lost in uh, the minutiae, sort of kind of the details, is sort of what I like to call. How does one strike an airfield that is uh, well protected by enemy radars, including the ones we can't see? Well, the first thing's first, you have to know they're there in order to engage them. By the way, we never actually said the weather. So let's take a couple moments here to establish weather. Hey, this is, a, this is Persian Gulf. It's it a little warm. Oh, uh, we'll go ahead and put some clouds in the sky. What is that? And it's actually really bad clouds. Let's try that cloud. I like that. That's pretty good. We'll make it a little windy, not too windy here. Go ahead and save that. And again, this is what I love about this program. I could just do this. So now what I'm going to do is that we're going to plan our strike here. And as with anything, you have to define what you're trying to achieve before you try to achieve it. That way you know whether or not you didn't achieve it. And the key thing here is we want to cripple this airfield. We want to prevent it from launching any aircraft whatsoever at any time. So in order to do something like that, we're going to have to target the part of the airfield that it is most vulnerable at. And uh, for those of you who are veterans of this, uh, we know exactly what the vulnerable part is. And that's the access point of the runway. So what an access point does is just like you can see here, that's going to be this little guy that allows the airplanes to actually taxi onto the runway and go. Many people are like, I got an idea. Let's just shoot up the runway. Let me show you why that doesn't work. If I scroll down here, you're actually going to notice that the uh, runway access point has a thousand damage points. And if I recall, it has no general armor. Now, if we take that knowledge and uh, we take a look at the runway itself, uh, let's see if I can find the actual runway here. Uh, there's the runway. Let's take a look at the runway. The runway on the flip side has, uh, let's see here, 1400 damage points in massive heavy armor. That means if we want to start tomahawking this thing, it's going to take 25 tomahawks. And then they're just going to repair it anyway. Whereas if we want to go ahead and shoot up the access points, which are completely unarmored, if you actually go back and look at the Tomahawk missile, let me go pull one of those up so you can see just how much damage this thing can cause. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's such an old picture. But if you come down here, you'll see that it actually does. Let's see here. We want to get its uh, warhead. 311. Three. Four Tomahawks, basically, will cripple an access point. But it will take probably 25 to cripple a runway. You start to see where we're going with this. So what we're going to do to uh, kind of kick everything off here is we're going to cripple the runways. So I'm going to go ahead and press the, uh, click on my little handy dandy sub here. I'm going to press Shift F1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the airport. What that will do is that will bring up a little screen that looks like this. And that will allow me to manually target the targets. Remember I told him to hold fire because I didn't want him to like waste $25 billion for the taxpayer money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find all the access points here. Watch how simple this is. I'm just going to scroll down here. Ah, runway access points. You're sitting here going, oh, you have to get all each one of those individually. No, no, don't waste time. Click on the first one. Hold shift. Click on the last one. Click on the tomahawk. And now you can select how many you want. That'll do it. So all we have to do now is press this button right here. And we've automatically allocated 32 tomahawks. Um, some of you sharp-eyed viewers will immediately say, wait a minute. Did you say it would only take 24 to kill the runway? Shut up. <laughs> of course, in the real world, we'd also be thing, interested in things like the ammo bunkers. We target their fuel. Uh, fuel doesn't matter right now. A lot of scenarios require you to hit the fuel tanks for points, but we're defining our own scenario here, so it doesn't matter. That should do it. Uh, that'll definitely inconvenience those tomahawks, to say the least. Now, the other problem we're going to face, of course, is I've got my scenario paused right now. Is this thing's going to fire basically a conga line of um, those tomahawks directly at our target here. The problem we're going to face is that our SAM systems, remember how I had a rapier here, is going to start going nutters and taking pot shots at those tomahawks. Because believe it or not, a tomahawk is it's pretty easy to see. If you actually click on it, it's going to sound dumb. But the thing is basically a stupid straight line airplane. You can see it actually has this very, very tiny nose that is completely detectable by enemy radar, especially if it's coming at it. So we have to keep these SA-5s either completely out of commission, or we're going to have to actually go ahead and uh, cripple them and destroy them. So now it's time to put everybody to work here. So if you recall, we have JSOWs on JoJo1. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control F11. I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves a name. I'm going to call it Seed and Deed. And these guys are going to be responsible for basically destroying all the good stuff before our Tomahawks get into position. Remember, our aircraft are going to be a little quicker than our Tomahawks. So I'm going to press OK here. It's going to yell at me and say, you need a reference point. That's easy. Control, right click, draw area, drag a box. Sure. Uh, target zone. Press the OK key. And now you can see this area is nice and highlighted. I press OK, and it's happy. It'll work. So this is going to be my kind of kill box is another way to think about it. And again, there's more sophisticated ways to do that, but that could be a hundred other videos in the end. This is just keeping it simple. So we need to find our group of F-35s that are ready to rock here. And I have plenty. I'm going to go ahead and grab them. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is uh, not hitting hard enough. 
And of course, a lot of people sit there going, oh, so we'll send two. I mean, it's an F-35, no problem. We could do that, but then you're going to be embarrassed when the, F the SA-5, I kid you not, will shoot down half of your JSALs before they get to the target. So you need to apply a little bit of force. Otherwise, they just reload and they're ready for you next time. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to launch a pretty hefty chunk of these. And we're not going to launch them all. You always want to have a reserve. Remember, you can always add these to the mission after the mission's already started. So I'm going to grab these, press the down arrow. It's going to shove all these in here. And then all we have to do is define a couple settings. So let's see here. We have eight units going on the right here. Flight size of two makes no sense in my mind. I'll do a flight size of four. So it's two flights of F-35s. Fantastic. I like that. Uh, of course, we can do things like what time do you want to go on station? What time do you want to take off? We can establish all that. But I'm not going to do any of that today because I just don't need to. Well, when we do the big coup de gras on the rest of the airfield, don't worry. We'll get to that. But I don't want to do that yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check these guys. They're good to go. The mission's pretty much all set. Uh, prosecution looks good. Looks good. MCON, WRA. We actually want them to use their radar. And um, you're sitting there going, why would you leave your radar? They'll know you're coming. F-35s are what they call, um, they have a low probability intercept radar on board. If you actually click on this, hit this F-35. Scrolling down here. Now let's see here. Where's our fantastic God radar, the NAPG-81? But it's an LPI radar uh, right here. So there's very, very, very little chance they're actually going to detect the radar missions, which means, well, let me see them, and they can't see us. And that sounds perfectly legit to me. So now we're pretty much uh, ready to get our scenario started. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to prepare my follow-up strike. I just want to do some quick little math here. So 85 nautical miles, 85, whoops, let's get my calculator here. Scroll down here, 85 divided by, uh, what do we got, about 450, I think is a cruise speed, times 60 is going to be an 11-minute flight time plus uh, six minutes, that's going to be 17 minutes before the uh, enemy airfields are, or I should say, before we're actually able to destroy the SAMs here. So unfortunately, that means I can literally take off at any time. But for the sake of safety, I'm going to order my rest of my strikers to begin their takeoff process a little bit after the fun kind of starts here. So let's go ahead and uh, press Control F. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, by the way, if this bothers you and you can't see uh, what you're doing, you can actually come over here into a map settings and you can shut this off if it bothers you. You can actually shut it off completely if it makes you crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the uh, star. Uh, what is it? Uh, I always get this one. There it is, star, asterisk. Go ahead and see what's going to be useful targets. Um, my opinion, it's going to be this side of the airfield. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a box around it. Control F11. Uh, let's see mission here. Uh, damage a boss. Sounds good to me. We'll do a land strike. Press okie doke. And now we're going to get everybody else involved in our little engagement here. So let's see here. Our takeoff time in Zulu. Uh, let's see. The current time is 3.30. We said, what, 17 minutes? So we'll say our takeoff time is going to be, that'll be 47. So we'll call it 3.50. So we'll say, oh, 3.50.00. And that's going to be my takeoff time. That's an important point. Targets, uh, we're going to eliminate anything that doesn't make sense. So ammo shelters do not make sense. Control tower uh ammo shelters in the real world these would be very important but we're not i'm just interested in striking all their hangars and stuff like that so going back to my units here i'm going to go ahead and throw tons and tons of units into it uh, we have our f-35as uh, these are the ones that we have uh, waiting for us they have the mark 82s we're going to toss all those in the pile down below uh, we have the f-35cs they're already busy that's why they got this little color if i click the switch by the way it hides the ones that are already busy and uh, now what we can do is we can grab all the raptors and we can use them all to uh, jump into the fight Click on the Raptors, and we can actually tell these guys to be escorts. So I'm going to come in here and mark selected as escorts, which is going to make all of these aircraft here basically going to keep an eye on these and protect them. So swinging back over to mission settings, there's so many things you can do here. I've made plenty of videos on kind of going through all the different options that you have at your disposal. But uh, a couple different things I want to do here. The first one here is I'm going to go ahead and say that they were going to split our attack. Uh, we're going to do multi-axis. We're going to make it nice and painful. We're going to do 30 seconds separation here. And we're going to do a, we'll do a 10, not a, a 10. 20. And that's going to split our flight plan up. If I were to actually zoom out a little bit, let me go into one of these things. If I were to come down here to the bottom, hit create or update flight plans, what it'll actually do is depending on what unit I have selected, it'll generate a flight plan for it that'll allow you to kind of see it. Now, one of the things you have to do is you have to actually set here, ah, the air unit's not airborne yet, so we won't be able to see that, but it will create this nice little split zigzag thing to make the intruders have a much, much tougher time. Another thing that's really nice if I go to the ATO is you can actually see the takeoff time is set exactly like I said it was, but it also gives us an important thing. This is time over target, which is going to be 83816, which again, if you want to do the math there, you can actually calculate that. Again, I've done many, many videos on sort of the complexity that this involves, but that works pretty well. Now, one thing I do want to change though, it just occurred to me that our strikers are British uh, F-35s here. We did, oh no, we did, we did, we're good. 
That's exactly what I wanted. Three groups of four will be fine. Uh, one thing I will change though is I'll actually make my escorts uh, be groups of four as well. That uh, just seems to make more sense to me. Let's do four. Of course, when you do that, we have to go ahead and update all of our flight plans because uh, like I said, now those F-22s are now, yeah, see I broke them up into the proper size groups. So this is gonna be fantastic. All right, wow. So now there's uh, one more thing we get to do and then we get to watch the fireworks as I like to say, and that's to give our E-8 or E-3 something to do. So I'm gonna go over here and press Control F11, uh, Control Insert, Control Insert, and this is going to be where our E A R E. I'm going to say it ten more times. It's basically going to be doing some donuts, uh, waiting to see for things stuff coming up here. So I'm going to press Control F11 again. We'll go ahead and call that a wax again, keeping it super simple for this. I'm going to set this to Support, not Patrol. Press Okey Doke. Grab our two E3s, dump this on here. They're ready to rock. And then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to change their takeoff time. You've got to change the takeoff time because if they take off early, the stupid SA-5s will shoot them down. So we'll come in here and we'll give them a four o'clock. Uh, that's actually pretty fair. I mean, if we wanted to be safer, we could do 350, but that will interfere with the uh, British Lightnings that are going to be taking off at about the same time. Uh, one thing we want to do here is we're just going to say, just keep one on station. So that way, when this guy's done with this flight, he's going to fly back and the other buddy's going to take off at the same time. The last thing we want to do is we just want to pop up here real quick and double check to make sure his radar is turned on, which it isn't, because um, it's supposed to be an AWACS plane. It needs to be able to see. All right, my friends, it is time. And this is one of the cool parts about this. Uh, before we do all this shenanigans, though, I'm going to save because if I broke something terribly, you want to be able to go back and fix it. And that's one thing I love the fact that they do. Uh, one more mistake I've noticed. Uh, these are, do we, we don't actually have tomahawks in here. Uh, we have tomahawks. So our Zoom Vault would have uh, joined in in the uh, tomahawk shenanigans. Um, I'd rather him not. So uh, what I'm actually going to do for him is I'm going to take the tomahawks off. And again, look at how easy this is to do. I can just come up here, click weapons. I can go to the PVLS and you see how he's carrying all these tomahawks. Guess what? Not anymore. So that takes care of that. And of course, so we can put in a bunch of, uh, what could be fun here? Uh, we'll do SM2s, why not? And how many do we get? 16 out of 160 out of four is eight is 36, right? Hey, good math, good math. All right, let's come up here. We'll go ahead and get rid of this one. Oh, I already knew that was 36, might be. Oh, well. Want to read about an SM2? You can now. Go up to here to change. We'll set that back to 36. And you can see we're good. If you're wondering why it's 36 and not 40, it's because the other cells are occupied by something else. So now we know he's not going to go pew, 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 and um, absolutely uh, destroy anything that comes by. And that is the sound those uh, missiles make when they launch, by the way. Let's go ahead and save one more time. There's something we have forgotten this entire time, and that is the fact that there's no enemy aircraft that are going to come say hello, and that's not fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to Iran one more time here. Press Control, right click. Add area. I'm just going to drag myself a little cap area. That's okay. Call this uh, cap. Press control F11 one more time. We'll call this cap. And we'll go ahead and set this to a patrol. AEW is fine for us. And what we're going to do inside of this patrol area is we're basically going to throw everything we've got up there. <laughs> Top set one in. And we'll, we'll be fair here. Well, we'll keep our flight sizes at uh, we'll do flight sizes of four. And we're going to use the one-third rule, which just means only keep one-third of the airplane up in the air at a time. Now, one thing we're going to change here is we're going to make it so their transit throttles a little quicker, and we're going to make it so their station throttles a little bit quicker, too, because we want them to burn fuel to kind of come back and forth. We're also going to double-check to make sure the radar is active, which it is. So this will keep at any given time, let's see, there's going to be 12 airplanes in the air at a time. That's a lot. That's actually, in my opinion, maybe a little too much here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say keep four of each because I'd rather not have, like I said, 12 airplanes buzzing around here all the time. That's going to be a lot to shoot at for the F-22s, and especially that first round of F-35s that's going to come ripping in. Now, the important thing is you will get to see us disable this airfield, so many of those airplanes will never launch. Let's do it. All right, switch to the other side. Now, I love this part. This is uh, the bit where I have to remember to turn on my audio so you can actually hear the fireworks. Of the uh, fireworks here. It's kind of fun. Now you can see I don't use sound very often. I don't actually know what the music sounds like in this game. Like, I know that sounds odd, but I don't think I've ever actually listened to it. <laughs> Just got one of those things. Unpause! All right, so a lot of things got to happen here. Um, obviously, the aircraft have to get themselves in position in the airfield. I noticed, by the way, we've already identified the emissions of that one radar, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, contact emissions. Uh, let's see here. All da, da, that's what I want to see. Uh, that's really honest me thing. So our SSGN right now is uh, floating his way up. He's uh, got himself up at a pretty good depth. He's uh, basically getting ready to fire. And uh, I, I forgot to turn my volume down from last time. <laughs> so off go the fireworks. And uh, one of the fun things to see here is if I actually switch over to a 3D view. 
Let's go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and click on this uh, one missile here, and you can watch them actually come uh, gooshing and gushing uh, directly out of our little sub here. And one thing I really love too is if you click on the actual sub, you can see that he's just chilling, just kind of doing his thing. And the only missiles you actually see are going to be the ones that are uh, already out of the water. You can see just this little whoop de doo, and then it kind of. Of course, in the real world, it goes kersploosh, and then it arcs, and it does that, and there's a bunch of smoke and drama that comes out of it. But I don't care. I think it's absolutely awesome. Man, that is going to be an awful lot of those in a minute. Go ahead, make sure. There he goes. Cool. So one of the cool things is if you're, like, doing a display, you can just, like, shift-click it and be like, oh, yes, as you can see by this tomahawk, you're about to get blown up. Ha, 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 ha. Nice. And meanwhile, on our little carrier group here, I'm tap the X6 key. You can see all these people are almost ready to go. It's going to be about a minute and a half. They have to spot them on the carrier deck, and then they got to kind of push them out the window. And it's a big old mess. Go ahead and unpause. Speed up time a little bit. But again, this entire scenario took me 30 minutes to make. You know, if I weren't explaining it as I go, I could probably do it in about half of that time. Off they go. Notice, by the way, that as soon as my uh, F-35s got airborne, they instantaneously picked up this vessel we didn't even know was there. So I feel bad just, like, leaving it there. So uh, Shift F1, I don't think I have anything that I can actually... Oh, I have no anti-ship weapons. Oh, well, he's going to get away free today. Theoretically, I could take this F-35 and I could be, like, really, really mean or something like that. Also notice, as soon as the enemy aircraft got airborne, I instantaneously detected them by, like, the 50 radars I've got going on. Look at how accurate of a picture I have with them, too. If I zoom in, there is zero ambiguity as to the position of this target. I know exactly where it is. I know it's out. I know everything about it. Modern equipment is insane. Now, one of the things that'll really, really amuse you here is these F-14s are actually going to come around and they're going to start looking and chasing after all these Tomahawks that we launched. So it's actually kind of neat to watch everything sort of happen all at the same time here, but that's kind of fun. Let's see how things are going for Iran right now. Notice we've identified every single one of these automatically as soon as they got launched. We even have a suspicious idea that they probably got launched from a submarine about right here. Isn't that amazing when you really, really think about it? It's not that he stuck his head out of the water. It's the fact that we are able to kind of work backwards from where this giant stream of Tomahawk missiles is coming from. So it's just, uh, like I said, part of the fun, part of the fun. By the way, notice we have no concept that there is a bunch of F-35s literally right there, but that's kind of the fun too. So our F-35s, as you can see here, have already launched their JSALs. And uh, one thing I don't want my F-35s to do is I don't want them to waste AMRAMs. So I'm actually going to pause, control shift F9, I'm going to go up to this thing. This is WRA, and I'm actually going to order all AIM 120s to not fire at maximum range because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of them. Trust me. So on my firing range, I'm going to say half range. Now, a lot of people are like, why would you do half range? These missiles go 75 miles. No, they don't. Don't delude yourself. Don't delude yourself. All right, I'll go ahead and do that. That's for the C5s. The Ds on the flip side, look at the max range on these things. Whoa, what are these things? AIM 54s? Set 50%. Of course, some of you would go, why don't you just do it to DLZ? Uh, not need it. 50% of range is plenty. And then my AIM 9s nine, as well. Uh, no escape zones. Probably pretty safe for these guys. And that's simply saying, don't fire until you're pretty darn confident that you're actually going to hit the target that you're interested in hitting. Really important with things like, you know, those kind of missiles. Now, the reason I did that is you see this AIM 120 here? By the way, if you want to see something incredible, we'll put up my 3D view. This requires the professional attack view, by the way. And I use TAC view for everything, so I'm totally fine with this. But check this out. <laughs> Look at how high up they go. They're just like, whoopsie daisies. And I'll speed up time a little bit. And these things just climb and climb and climb and climb and climb. And then what they do is they hit their apex and they actually start coming back down to Earth. Now, the most incredible thing here is if you look really carefully, you can see all of these uh, lovely AM AMRAMs basically coming back down to Earth. And as they descend, you can see that their speed is actually going to drop significantly because they're no longer burning their motors right now. They're just basically re-entering. Our four friends in these F-14s on the flip side, look at this. They have a vague idea there's missiles here, but the only reason they have a vague idea is because it was detected by the early warning radar. Otherwise, these poor F-14s would get a real, real surprise without any knowledge. They're going to get smart, though, and what they're going to do is they're immediately going to beam the missile, and they'll do all those things automatically. I don't have to reach in and tell them what to do here. They're going to be smart enough to set all those things up themselves. There they go. Notice these F-14s just turn and ran. That's the best strategy. There's no reason why you should beam it if you could just leave. So unfortunately, remember all those really, really expensive AM-120s that fired automatically because we didn't tell them not to? They're just wasting their time and basically they pushed the F-14s out of the way, which tactically speaking, I don't mind that. Oh, he almost got them. But notice none of those AMRAMs did anything because they were just too far out of range.
So our F-14s now, um, this is a real fun game if you've never played this game before. But basically you have to come down to like, you know, 500 feet and chase after these and actually take shots on them as they're getting to position here. Now the cool thing here is as they zoom in a bit, you can see them just spreading out to a really, really wide fan as they start preparing to actually strike the individual components of the airfield. Meanwhile, simultaneously, you have all these AJSOWs that we launched that are basically going to damage all the different radar systems and stuff like that. Of course, our F-35s, um, they're spent. Uh, they've done their thing. Um, they have a couple more AMRAMs. And uh, one of the things that I do sometimes is I go find the guy who still have missile left, which is not him. Uh, how about you? Do you have some missiles left? You do. I'll actually turn him around and uh, go put him to use here. We'll actually drop him out of the system here. We'll press D, right click, and we're actually going to cancel his mission here because I'd rather just use him. Let's get him to work here. You are unassigned, sir. So now I'm going to order him right into the combat and we're going to sneak up on those uh, sneaky F 14s and uh, do our thing here. I hear some explosions. Not a very exciting explosion. Da 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 da. Now notice our F-14 buddies are um, having a heck of a fun time. The problem here is all it takes is one remaining access point, and it won't matter. And now we're getting warnings saying missiles are being launched. Again, these missiles are chasing after our JSOWs here, which is exactly what I'd expect to happen here. So let's go up to Afterburner. We'll go up to uh, F-35 altitudes here. Put this up to max altitude, kick off the Afterburner, and let's go. Oop, I think I was controlling the missile there instead of this guy. My bad. There he goes. One of the downsides of the F-35 here is it is an incredible plane, but it's not the fastest thing going, believe it or not. So uh, we're going to... It's not really its focus. I noticed, by the way, almost none of my JSOWs uh, got to my target. Oh, man. Ah, ooh. The most important thing, though, is that we cripple the F uh, SA-5 here, even if that means I have to fire a couple more Tomahawks at it. There it goes. The main 120 is doing its thing. Now, notice, by the way, this one was shot at a much, much shorter range. This is much more reasonable, 43 miles. But unfortunately, it stupidly shot at a target that's running. Don't shoot at running targets. Um... Oh, I didn't see that coming, but I'm not annoyed about it, I guess. I did say destroy anything. By the way, I noticed that all the second group has automatically launched their weapons when they realized that the first group had basically not achieved their goals. Ah, go back home. You're done. One of the really useful things to do, by the way, is you could leave this guy up here doing donuts, acting as an AWACS plane for you, well, which makes it much, much simpler for it. And I see that none of these got remotely close. This is the only thing I actually need to damage here. Everything else is... Nice to kill, but um, look at that phantom's like, I got it, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. Nah, that's gotta do it right there. Oh, ah. Hopefully that crippled it, because if it didn't, this battle's gonna be a lot longer for us. Meanwhile, if you recall, uh, we ordered up some stuff to get launched in a few minutes. If you actually go up to the air tasking order, you can see there that our takeoff time has been established. Uh, it's about 7.50 in uh, about six, seven, eight minutes. Uh, we're gonna start doing our thing here. So speed up time. Oh, it did a lot of damage. That was expensive. That was expensive. Notice, by the way, our aircraft are automatically here. And if you just heard that 750 roll around, there goes our first airplane. And that will be our F-35s, our English F-35s. So one of the problems we have here is we don't know how much damage we did. And if I actually zoom in here, you can see that some of these access points were damaged badly. But some of the access points are probably still kicking pretty strong here. So if I actually uh, switch on to this mode real quick, you can see that a few survived. And uh, we have to disable them because as long as the things survive, they can still launch planes at us. So I'm going to go ahead and order up another attack there. Let's see, that's crippled. Let's go sneak up it this way. There's a tarmac spaces, ammo shelters. I think we got the other ones pretty well there. Tarmac space. I'm just going through each one individually. Yeah, I think we did a pretty nice job. You know what? This building taunts me. It gets a tomahawk. You know, $20 million is worth a wooden shack. We're also going to deal with that um, blind fire because they don't want that rapier shooting up our expensive F-35s. And you know what? You get a missile too. And you know what? You get two missiles because I like you. All right, nice. And again, I just spent, you know, $2 billion for the taxpayer money. You know, this submarine is literally going to have to go all the way back to New London and reload. <laughs> Oh, well. Notice, by the way, that all these Tomaha or these um, Tomcats are rushing towards our other aircraft. Uh, the reason they're interested, let me go zoom out so you can see why, is because if you remember that AWACS plane I was talking about, notice this is now detected. Um, so these um, F-14s are like, let's check that out. I want, a, I want a piece of that AWACS plane. What they don't realize, though, is they're about to fly in a range of something much more deadly, which is, again, why you have to be so careful about these things. 
All right, we'll go speed up time. Here comes the next round of Tomahawks. Negative radar contact, procedural control only. Uh oh. Oh, man. This is what happens when you launch unescorted Tomahawk cruise missiles. Ah, happens every time. You should have sent them over the woods there. It's okay, though. It's it's part of the fun. Also, I'd rather their F-14s waste time chasing those things down than my much more expensive planes that are going to be there in a few minutes. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Nope. Did not work. I love how my AWACS planes got such a good radar. I can detect the individual missiles launched at the Tomahawks at that range. Oh, man. These guys are having a fun time with this. Yes, yeah, strategically, this is the incorrect method to do this. Bam! Ah, oh, I didn't even get the observer. Oh, I got the radar, though. Unfortunately, the rapier is uh, still super strong. So, um, I guess I'll do this correctly. I'll wait for my other planes to get into position. So, remember those F-22s I was telling you about? <laughs> these guys are going to be very, very, very unhappy uh, when they discover that these things are in the neighborhood. Look at the range in the radar on this thing. It's staggering. It's getting into range. Patience. Remember, I believe it was, what, 43 miles? Eh, still got a couple miles to go here. Notice these F-14s are chasing. Saying, I'm, I'm picking something up here. Now watch this. Actually, I flipped the radar screen around real fast. You can see the clueless that there's a wall of F-35s, but we know there's an AWACS plane out there. So, of course, he's going to come do his thing here, not realizing he's about to get steamrolled. Eh, sometimes these things happen. Uh, also, let the steamrolling begin. What are you guys waiting for? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our mission. One of the things we have to check is real quickly is uh, double C, let's see here, uh, damage to bass. We need to double check to see what range we're allowed to engage at here. No, 80 nautical miles, that is in range. So there's really no reason why we're not engaging these. Actually, let me press shift up one real quick. I just want to confirm the fact that I didn't goof something up here. Um, it's the difference in altitude is the problem. Oh, I did not, I did not anticipate that. Let's see here. So his altitude is 2,000 feet. So if I'm a smarter person here, I have to actually order my escorts to get down. Get down. Get down again. So let's see here. Military transit. Uh, let's see. A strike intercept. Let's see. We are on damage to bass here. Looks down. Submarine settings. We're not doing any of those. Cruise. We don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, nope. I guess we're just going to have to fly past them. Otherwise, I'd have to take my main group. One thing you can do at any point, by the way, is you can cancel them and uh, manually uh, work with them. So if I wanted to, for example, I could actually kick them off the mission here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, assigned a mission. Oh, I just saw it. Assigned a mission. Every time I see it, I don't see it. Oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and dump them off the mission. And then I'm going to go press F1. And we're just going to engage them the old-fashioned way. Go down to minimum altitude. Things you got to watch out for. Because remember, these F-35s are very, very, very high flyers. Speed up. And look at this. We're in range. Here comes the fireworks. No, oh, those F-14s are never going to know what hit them. All of a sudden, there's just going to be missiles that appear from the sky, and it's just going to start splattering on them. Notice, by the way, the F-14 still has a pretty heavy amount of agility here. Go ahead you know what? I think they're doing a perfectly fine job. I'm going to assign them back to that mission. When you do this, by the way, make sure you set that as escort. Otherwise, they won't be escorts kind of a thing. Are you guys in the correct mission? Yeah. How about you? Are you guys in the correct mission? Yeah, you're good. One of those things that I must have right-clicked the wrong button at one point. Yeah, I'm good. We'll see what happens as the mission kind of shakes out here. Oh, what a hit. What a hit. All right, let's click on them. Looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good to me. <laughs> oh, I thought that was an airplane. It's an AMRAM just doing its thing. All right, cool. So far, so good. So one of the problems is that Rapier is still alive. Um, that's very problematic for us because it means that um, we're going to have to be really careful. So one of the things that you can do is you can actually just take a guy and have him take a pot shot at as he goes by. So what I'll actually do is give him a pre-order to basically take that shot. And the reason that'll give us an advantage later on is when he does go by, he'll kind of hit that rapier. So not be surprised, by the way, if we lose an F-35. Now notice, by the way, how all the aircraft have uh, split themselves up in every which way. Also notice we've detected a couple more bogeys, but notice there's less of them. All right, there goes my initial drop. There goes my initial set of drops. And notice my F-22s are like, me, 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 let me have it. Let me, 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 me. Watch this. Just order them to be manually hostile here. And the F-35 is like, no, no, my shot, my kill, my kill, my kill. Notice, by the way, um, Iran is just sitting there. Oh, the fireworks begins. Oh. And go ahead first. Oh. Ah. Uh-oh. Here comes the lag. Once you get enough units going at one time, it starts to get a little chunky. Oh. 
Ooh, there's some jerk with an SA-7 or something like that that tried. Oh, man. Ow. Ouch. Ah. Now notice our strikers return, but here's the scariest part of all. If I actually were to switch real quickly over to Ron, you can see that we saw a couple of the airplanes at least for a couple moments there, basically visually because of, uh, you know, just looking up kind of a thing like that. That looks pretty good. Everybody go home. Uh-oh. Why not, right? Really easy way to lose an airplane, by the way, is hanging around the uh, target area too long, kind of a thing like that. And that pretty much uh, takes care of our scenario here. So uh, this is the fun part. This is when we get to take a look at sort of uh, the results. Obviously, we didn't put scoring or anything like that. So that's going to be kind of a big aspect of it. So let's go see what we did. I'm going to go switch over to the other side. Now, one thing you'll notice, by the way, is Iran continued to launch aircraft at us. That simply meant that we must have missed one of the uh, access points here. You can see most of them are absolutely splattered here. But I'm sure that just takes exactly one access point to survive. And uh, everything's fine. So I think we got, like I said, most of them. Ah, there's one we missed. I don't know which one we missed, but it only takes one, folks. And they will just cha-cha line uh, aircraft onto there. But uh, one of the things you could do is you can actually hit F6 here. Look at how much damage we did. If we order him to land, you can actually see how much damage that we had here, including several aircraft that actually returned to base uh, safely here and gives you some pretty good times there. All right, let's see how we did. So we come up here. We go over to losses and expenditures. Uh, let's see. Um, wow. Uh, that's embarrassing. We, we, we did nothing. This was uh, an absolute embarrassment from a tactical achievement here. And yes, you're like, well, did you knock the airport and scared them? No, this is terrible. Like, this is embarrassing. Let's see, decoys, none of those. Uh, expenditures, let's see here. Eh, we used a lot of stuff. But, um, of course, take a look at the cost to the taxpayers here. That's the best part. Let's see, NATO, none. <laughs> decoys, none. Expenditures, watch this. 16 of these, one of these. 37 of those, what are they, $800,000 US each? Uh, we got some 9Xs and 24 paveways. And oh my gosh, uh, cost of uh, Tomahawk cruise missile. Let me go look that up on Google for you real quickly here. Oh my God, they're almost 2 million a piece. So this entire operation today probably costs the United States and government and NATO and the United Kingdom, you know, half a billion dollars for the achievement of eliminating, I don't know, six or seven airplanes and doing quite a bit of damage. So there's a lot of things we could have done to do this one better. And like I said, this is one of the reasons I love this is we can reload the scenario and try again. You know, we can individually target individual buildings. We can go through, we can very, very carefully, precisely allocate our tomahawks so they have an escort as they ride in. There are so many other things we could have done, but that's the beauty of this program. And that's hopefully what you take away. All right, so we're, we've gone about an hour or so. Uh, this is the point in the uh, little live stream here. I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions or anything that they would like to see in command real fast. Uh, that's definitely something I could call up for you. Or maybe you have a question about something you're not sure of. This would be a great time to uh, kind of throw that over in the chat. Like I said, I'll keep it going for a couple of minutes here to see if anything comes around. Um, while that's going on, of course, uh, we'll have to go back to uh, somebody whose name was Belugan, who was uh, the reason why I play this game. And uh, we'll get that all set up while you folks throw your questions in the chat, should you have any. If you don't, that's fine. Again, you can always uh, go visit the forums. Uh, those folks are super duper helpful as far as that goes. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's the United States. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. Uh, what do we want? Minot today? We'll do Minot Air Force Base. Bop. Da, da, da. That sounds pretty good to me. Bop, bop. Swing over to this side. <laughs> Actually, you know, I could do it even easier. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just, just, just fire willy nilly. Um, don't, don't think that you need to wait around or anything like that. So we'll let them uh, kind of do their little thing here. Apparently, I lost the helicopter at some point. Oh, in that case, fine. I'll do it myself. Let's see, shift F one. Oh, I'm on the wrong team. <laughs> Whoops, that would have been embarrassing. Oh, man, that would have been so embarrassing. Could you imagine me doing that? That, that I would have laughed pretty hard. I would have laughed pretty hard. So hopefully people in the audience, I caught my little boo-boo there. All right, so let's go try that again. Import, export. Oh, I accidentally selected all of them. That's probably not recommended. Let's go to the United States. I'll do ICBM. We'll go back to Minot. It's easy enough. Grab that. Control-Shift-F9. Go ahead and say uh, nuclear weapons. Yo, let's go. Grab that. Uh, let's go ahead and press the Shift F1, and we'll do it the old-fashioned way. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. You get a nuclear weapon, and you get a nuclear weapon. Uh, you folks, unfortunately, you can't do one of these things up here. So, like, you can, like, click on one at a time sort of thing, because you can only get one at a time. 
So you get a nuclear weapon, you get a nuclear weapon, you get a nuclear weapon, you get a nuclear weapon. And you know what? You get a nuclear weapon too. Why not? Okay. So now, of course, when you do that, control shift F9, you can just tell them to willy nilly just go. So we'll let them do that and we'll see what happens. All right. Um, safety guy says, why do you prefer this over the pro version? And uh, which US play has the best radar, the rivet joint? Um, so safety guy, um, the reason I don't like the pro version is a lot of things in the pro version, uh, the best way to describe it is to say that it's designed for data use scientists and it's designed for data users. And there's a lot of uh, little gameplay things that are for from an older version that I've really, really, really kind of gotten used to that I actually prefer in the civilian version than the pro version. The pro version is fantastic. If I want to run a scenario and see exactly how many missiles I used out of 10 million times, I could do that easily, casually, no problem in the pro version. And it does a delightful job. The other thing the pro version does, which is incredibly awesome, is the fact that it gives you the ability to actually watch. Uh, you can record everything and load it in attack view afterwards. That's something I really wish they would change in uh, command as well. So we have it. And now the other thing too is the way the licensing and some of that piece works. Like I'm not going to describe how it works, but basically it makes it a little tricky to actually open. And it's not to say if you're part of these organizations, it is hard, which it is not. It's just for me as a consumer, it's a little harder to use. Um, and asking about the uh, which U.S. plane has the breast radar, I that's it's it's going to be like anything. It's it's going to be highly dependent on what you mean by best radar. Uh, there are definitely radars out there that are fantastic at detecting ground units, and there are definitely a bunch of radars out there. Did the mission end already? What happened to all my missiles they just launched? That was interesting. Do we have any missiles left? Nope, they all got launched. Huh. Did anybody just watch all the missiles do that? I would not be surprised if I found another bug. I'm, I'm famous for that. Um, so as far as the rivet joint goes... Where did all my missiles go? Also... <laughs> that's entertaining to watch. Um, let's go take a look at the rivet joint real fast. I'll type in the rivet joint. Uh, 2020. I don't think this thing has that strong of a radar, actually. This is an APQ. It's a ground mapping radar. Yeah, you can't do much with that radar. Uh, the one that I really, 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 really like is actually, where's the uh, E2? Where's the new one? The D, I think it is. Uh, this one. The radar on this thing is ridiculous. And of course, if you really want excessive, uh, go get the zoom vault. Uh, that, the radar on that thing, let me grab it real quickly here is absolutely positively incredibly good like it's it's just it's like cheating and then of course if you're a weirdo like me you'd press insert and you type an spy and oh that's not the one. Oh, what is it uh apx oh spx it's gonna come to me in a second here x band uh band radar i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it Oh, it's going to take me a while. I've got to remember the name of that one. But basically, it's a giant radar that floats, and it's it's just, it can see into space and stuff, and it's a super fun radar. All right, cool. I have no idea what happened to my uh, Minuteman. I'm actually going to look into that. I'm kind of curious what happened here. Uh, let's see here, weapon endgame. We'll go ahead and open that up real fast. Uh... I've never... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, incompetence, incompetence. Uh, that, that's on me. That was on me. This kind of thing happened. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have no reason to do so, but uh, I've done scenarios all around the world. All right, I'll give everybody a few more moments if they'd like to throw me some more questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of enjoy uh, what, uh, what is that? You know, two and a half billion dollars worth of tomahawks can do to one airfield. Let's see here. Ah. Uh... Not much. As a matter of fact, all we did is uh, dent up the same six pieces of tarmac space a hundred times. Again, if you want to waste tomahawks, do an automatic attack. Otherwise, it's a heck of a lot more safer to just not manually do it yourself. All right, cool. So other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed our live stream today. Like I said, I usually don't do command live streams. They tend to be longer and take a little more prep. But again, the purpose here was to let everybody see what this game is all about and give you a fairly good idea of what you're getting with it. I have 100% gotten all the money that I put into this game out of it. Like, no doubt in my mind in the slightest. If this is something that appeals to you, this is like heaven. There's a very, very few other things. SPX1, thank you. Too late. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. I knew I'd... Somebody remember. I'm right. It had the word expand. I wasn't wrong. But yeah, this thing has a radar that can see, oh, 2,800 nautical miles. I think that's enough. I think that's enough.
But other than that, uh, have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody. Uh, for me, it's the afternoon in the United States. I'm going to go get some lunch, go take the dog for a walk and everything like that. Uh, coming up next week, well, we've got, like I said, every Monday we do release another video. I do the best I can to try to keep it sort of timely. It's the things that I see like on forums and Discord, and that's usually where I'm looking for comments more than anything. But uh, other than that, enjoy.